Yes, I just went live now. Greetings, everyone. Happy Monday. So we're on Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Clubhouse. I'm everywhere. Prolific. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're everywhere. So good morning to everyone. It's good afternoon somewhere. Maybe good evening somewhere else as well. So I know we have a global audience. So greetings, everyone. I have a very special topic today. Are you a consumer or a producer? And I also have Miss Rene with me on Clubhouse. She's going to stay briefly. So what's on your mind so far, Rene? Well, I think this is a great conversation, and I, it, it's a really important one for people to be thinking about if they are a producer and consumer. And and a lot of times we give people grief, or I've heard this happen, about just being a consumer. But my hope is that if you're touched by the right information, you're consuming good information, mm. eventually that leads you to being a producer. Oh, okay. that's that. Yeah, I, I love I love this. I love what you said, because um, whenever I engage with people, I always want to know, you know, what's going through people's minds, what they're thinking about, because so let's start from what you just said in terms of consumer consumerism. The reality is that the purpose of consumption, a producer consumes as well. Right. But the purpose of consumption is to produce. So when you think about a manufacturer. For you to manufacture a product, for you to create a product, you're going to need to consume raw materials, okay? You're going to take in, right? You're going to process, and then you're going to put out. So the consumption mindset <clears throat> of a producer is so that they can unlock greater productivity, innovation, and they can create bigger results. However, when you just consume, then... If you're just a pure consumer, then you're just consuming to pleasure yourself and nothing wrong with that, right? But if that is all we do, then there's something wrong with that, <laughs> right? So this concept of consumption also goes to intentionality. So for example, in the world of business, um, let's say you're a business owner and you want to buy a property for your business, you're likely to approach a bank to finance that you know property if if that property is for personal consumption meaning residential then that's for your own use your own personal use but if you are investing to buy a property that is for business then you 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 fall into a different category the government treats you differently there are tax incentives on and on and on the way you undo your your investment and your spend towards productivity is even handled by the government differently so you find out that if all you're doing is using your time energy and resources to pleasure yourself then that's the end of it there's no it's not a means to an end it's the end in of itself okay and one of the things i just say just to make it more fun well it's serious but let's just laugh about it is also this concept of do you want to just own a handbag a shoe or you want to own the factory that produces the handbag or the shoe. It's a decision, right? I love nice things. <laughs> Do you want to drink coffee or own parts of, right? A company that produces coffee. And when I talk about ownership, not just within the concept of entrepreneurship, right? You can own shares. You can go to stock markets and start buying shares. Right, because the investor mindset is different also from pure consumption. Right, so you can literally own part of a company, you can go on the stock market, you can go out there and become a shareholder of major companies. Meaning, the money you're spending is to own an asset, it's about equity, right? And the entrepreneur, right, also builds assets. That's the difference, right? An entrepreneur will build an asset. And if you're not building anything, it's because you've not, you're not doing entrepreneurship the right way. Because how we also build or attempt to build in entrepreneurship ecosystem, I realize that not everybody understands that you're supposed to be building a business that is, that is an asset that can generate value for both the shareholders and the consumers or the customers, right? 
that can deliver value in the marketplace and also deliver value to the shareholders. That's the whole point of all of this, right? But I realized that many times when people come at it, when they come at business development, when they come at entrepreneurship, purely from, you know, employee mindset, I, do, I just need to survive. I just, I'm just looking for money. Uh, th that mindset would lead people to eventually become an employee of their own world and not build anything. Meaning five years after you started your entrepreneurship journey, do you have an asset in your hand? Do you have a name, a brand? that has equity, that is well-known, that can command value, that people are willing to give money to or do business with. All of these things has to be built. A name has to be built. Processes has to be built. Systems has to be built. Structures has to be built. But most times, I realize that people who haven't gone through this type of business development, education, wealth building mindset, investor mindset, right? it's 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 the diff the way life is being done is very different and nothing wrong with consumption guys i'm just saying the intention behind the consumptions will determine your outcomes and results if your intention is just to pleasure yourself listen i love nice things lotions potions all those things but trust me i also shifted into the space where i also own beauty brands so i don't just consume beauty brands lipsticks all those things listen i'm on the other side of production as well Right when we are doing formula for formulation of like listen, I'm testing skincare about like the smell, the lotion, potency, all those things. So not only am I a consumer, right? I'm a producer. Not only am I a consumer of books, I'm also a producer. I've written books. So, but when people just tilt into one dimension alone, because consumption is the hand in of itself when the consumption when where you are spending your time energy and resources is to pleasure yourself and that's the hand in of itself meaning you are not using that investment to produce other outcomes to produce assets to build legacy on and on and on then you are not you are not playing in the producer mindset and then when you scale this up so at the individual level right people make decisions but when you scale this up to the community level right, to the state level, to the city state level, to the national level, to the continental level, you realize that when we talk about economic development, regions of the world that consumes more than they produce will be in deficit. I'll stop there. I'll just put a, a, a should I put a comma or a full stop there? Is that personal consumption leads to, right, personal weather deficits. I don't, I want to keep today's conversation very light, but I know I already went deep. So I'm trying to pull my I'm trying to pull myself back just to keep it simple. But I know I went I already went there, right, Renee? So so let me pull myself back and then let Renee comment or react to everything I just dumped out there. I just shared now. Over to you, Renee. Okay. So you know, one of the things that I love about you is that you dive into these conversations that other people aren't having, especially in the business realm. And I, my, as I understand it, your motivation is to encourage entrepreneurship, to encourage people to, to take, to, to, to own and operate their own businesses, but to not be consumed by their businesses. And that happens if you come in from the employee mindset. And, but here's my question, how do we get people over that mm. the, the, the motivating factor is to be a consumer mm. advertising marketing is to consume other people's products and services mm. and then on top of it how you make the money to consume those products and services is to work for someone else that is the entrainment we've all received it's not to be an entrepreneur mm. okay I love I love this and welcome Beth Alicia welcome as well please come up to the stage if you would like to engage in this uh, dialogue and discussion so let me let me take you briefly to just the general history of humanity humans just humans be beyond just this sophisticated like fiscal policy GDP economics all those things right at the end of the day. When humans congregate, when humans 
live together, whether in local communities or national states, right? At the end of the day, humans always exchange value, right? We always look to each other for what we want, what we need, what we use to do life. We are consumers by nature, right? So you eat food, you wear clothes, <laughs> everything that humans leverage for lifestyle, for living, okay? That's the principle of consumption, right? My shoe, everything that we, we, we use to do life, whether it's electronics, whether it's beauty products, whether it's food, whether it's jewelry, whether it's clothing, everything that in, in terms of part of being in this dimension of existence, the things that make us sustain livelihoods, lifestyle, right? Humans consume. We take in stuff. We, we, we bring in stuff. And we tend to go to people who have the things that we want, right? So this is, this is true anywhere in the world is that you, when you have a new baby, listen, you're going to need blankets, you're going to need lotions, you're going to need this. And the people who provide the things that we need are the producers, okay? And so humans will continue to create value and exchange value, right? We consume music, we like music, we like entertainment, right? We, we I mean, when it comes to healthcare, or lawyer, we need certain things to live in the life. In life, now things get a little bit more dynamic when we start talking about modern life, modern living, right? Before, before now, 60, 40 years ago, living life was <laughs> less complex. Have your own chicken, have your own goats, have your own stuff, and then call your neighbor if you want to exchange your egg for something that they have. Trade by butter. Life was a lot simpler. We weren't consuming this massive amount of stuff that we do today. When you think about the history, right? Houses were not this big before. Cars were not this big before. Food was not this big before. We were more conservative in our consumption 40, 60, 50 years ago. Fast food wasn't this. <laughs> the way we now live in modern life, we are consuming more. And guess what? Human want is insatiable. That's economics, right? They taught us that. Like humans will continue to gulp. That's who we are. My point is human consumption also is fueling, right? Productivity. The more we want, the more people will produce. The more we demand, the more people will produce. The more chat GPT you want, people will go into that space to meet needs because there's a mindset the producer mindset will always produce what humans will consume and value we will always be consuming guys that's who, by nature to sustain to live life to eat food consumption your toothpaste your toothbrush somebody created it somebody invested time energy and resources to to create to produce the things that we consume so that is a given. Now, what then happens when we start going into GDP, economic development for cities, states, nations, regions of the world, is that those who practice, those who invest time, energy, and resources to create what is being consumed in their local community or around the world, listen, what they will get back is money. Money will flow into those local communities. Money will flow into those individuals. Money will flow into that nation, a nation that is built on creativity, innovation, right? Value creation, not value consumption, value creation, value dis distribution, value exchange. will exchange all their creation for currency, for money. And the people who only send money out to buy, will send their money out and will get whatever they are buying, will import into their livelihood. And the, when we now go into GDP, this is where we start, start talking about deficits, is that countries that buy more than they make, they are in deficits. They are spending more than they are earning. 
So whether it's an individual or a city or a nation or a region, the principle is the same. When you produce, whatever you produce and you are able to sell, whether to your local community or internationally, you are taking it to that marketplace to exchange it for money. You're expecting money back. So those regions, let me use simple words. Those who are rich versus those who are poor is tied to these economic activities. It's tied to economic activities, what we call commercial activities. Those activities generate money or send money out of the community. So again, I, I know I just went in. <laughs> I was trying to keep bringing myself to simple, simple, just to ground this. And I welcome Miss Beth to the space. How are you today? How was your weekend? I am doing great. I'm sorry. I was throwing some onions into, it's finally got cold enough down here. So I had to um, make, uh, I'm making like a beef stew type thing. Um, yeah, so nice. great weekend. I'm just listening to you all. And yeah, no matter what, we can be the producer, but we're always going to have to consume something from somebody else, right? Yes, exactly. I mean, yes mm -hmm. yes we are always going to and it's a think of it as a chicken and the egg it's the chicken and the egg where it's interconnected consumptions and productivity is interconnected one serves the other demand versus supply which one is more important the more you consume that money goes into the economy it powers other other person's factory right if you're a producer and nobody's buying what you're making you do suffer right so those who consume keeps the economy going that's why you will see that during a downturn the u.s government would inject money because people have to keep spending for an economy to keep growing people have to spend people have to buy any region where people say there's no money they're not buying you see the economy shrink and those are the things we watch out for, right? Those who, 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 who watch the numbers, fiscal policies, economic development, inflation, stagflation. Like, I believe next year they're expecting stagflation, not just inflation, stagnancy. And stag when you talk about all these things, economics is just really measuring human activities, human commercial activities. Is, is, is the, what underpins all this big grammar is human behavior, human emotion and human behavior. If people have confidence, okay, in the currency, confidence in an economy, they will spend. If they don't, they, they will be told. When they will be told, the economy shrinks, right? When you think about the bank run, the moment you, you think your money is disappearing, emotion kicks in, you rush to the bank, everybody wants to collect their money because we don't believe the bank can insure us anymore. It creates a chaos. Everybody has to build the bank, da, 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 da. Human emotion fuels all those things. Human emotion. <laughs> Economics, in my opinion, I would say, see, you are just studying how people feel part time that is influencing them to trust the right economic landscape and they have the freedom to buy and sell. When people don't trust what's going to happen tomorrow, listen, we hoard, we hoard. Remember during uh, COVID, what were we hoarding? Tissue paper. <laughs> okay, I know I just put all those things out there. They are all connected. Mindset, human behavior, all these things influences how we show up or what we do. It influences us. So the producer mindset will make people, people who believe in a better tomorrow, okay? People who believe in a better tomorrow, will invest in, in being part of that tomorrow, right? A farmer will sow seed because they believe this seed will yield, will multiply itself, right? The principle, the mindset of a farmer is not to take a seed and throw it away. No, it's not even to consume it and hand the process. No, the farmer believes, listen, if I put this behind if i do the right thing if i invest this seed and i don't consume it now and i plant it and i water it and i work for it and i invest in it the farmer believes that the yield will be greater than the investment that's the reason we farm any farmer <laughs> that thinks what they put in or they're going to get less back or equal 
listen, who wants to do? Why do you do all that work? Nobody's interested. No, I will even advise you to farm on that ground. This is why we think about youth. The same is true in entrepreneurship. The whole point of investing your time, energy, and resources to create value. Listen, it's not for play. Nobody's here to play. I want everything plus 10x, 100x, 1000x. What are you saying? Intentionality. We invest to get more, but the consumer will buy a handbag and that's the end of the transaction. Take your handbag, take it home and enjoy. But trust me, if you put the same money in the shares of Burberry, I'm just putting that name out there. I won't call names anymore. <laughs> But if you put the same money, the same 2K, 5K, 10K, 150K that you used to buy that handbag, the, eight, the same $800 you used to buy the red bottom shoe, I won't put names, you take that same money with an intention to multiply it, to keep it or multiply it, put it in the shares of those companies, it's a different outcome. Mindset leads us to behave in different ways. Nothing wrong with consumption. Again, I'm just breaking this thing down. Enjoy what you... Listen, after all, listen, I love nice things. I'm bad lady. That's why I'm using all those examples. But trust me, as we are doing that, we are also doing the other one to balance it out, right? So anyway, any other reaction? <laughs> I see what Tim Fabric says insightful on Instagram. What else? Yeah, thank you everyone joining. Hopefully, this is meaningful dialogue. There was there were other things I wanted to share today. There's a link um towing umessary.com slash workbooks, business development workbooks. You can download some there. You can get more information there as well. So any other um re questions, reactions, Renee, thoughts? <laughs> I know sometimes it's, it's it takes time to get to the mic, but if not, I'll keep talking. Uh, Miss Beth, any other reactions? Okay. Let me let me keep going. And I see D Diomaye joining us as well. Thank you for being here. Yes, if you're joining on the other platforms, feel free to type your questions or reactions as well. Um, and then like, subscribe, share this as well. And if you're team replay, thank you for coming. Do drop your comments as well. I usually check on after the video processes as well. So we do have a video going and then we have audio um, here on Clubhouse as well. So yes, so I mean, the reason I wanted to hold this session and just, you know, engage in this discussion is really at the end of, end of the day, what fuels the work that I do? I mean, for those who may not be familiar with the, you know, background of my work in the world of e economic development and now that I teach, entrepreneurship, business development, international trade, trade policy, all of those things, <clears throat> is because years ago, right, I worked at the headquarters of Walmart, then my dad passed, blah, blah, blah. Fast forward, what happened? I don't want to go too much into the story, but the bottom line was I'm seriously connected to this conversation of foreign aid versus foreign trade. I also host world leaders on my platform when we talk about trade with africa um you know engaging ambassadors government leaders world bank u.s government like economics from pwc like all of these global leader global thinkers right all working hard to end poverty right okay for me at the end of the day <laughs> this is what i say to everybody all you need to do is teach people, okay? All you need to do is to empower people with the right knowledge and to develop the skills such that they can create value and exchange value, right? That's it. That's it. All this merry-go-round, 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 it takes nobody, it, people don't move far. Listen, uh, look at where everybody is today. The merry-go-round is not solving anything. China got it right. I've studied regions of the world that have come from extreme poverty and they've recovered. When you think about Chile in the late 70s, early 80s, the things they did, Chicago boys, I won't go too much into that. You think about Vietnam. Listen, I had a mentor that lived in, in Vietnam that was responsible for everything 
um, coming out of Vietnam and Cambodia into Walmart supply chain. And she gave me the history of their country after the war. They were disconnected from the global supply chain. What they had to do, they owed so much money. They owed so much money to the old Soviet and they had to pay it up. How did they pay it up? Part of what they had to do was to be manufacturing military uniforms. She said they will ship those uniforms on waterways and send it like thick winter uniforms they will manufacture, ship it, right? When they finish paying their debt, they realized that unknowingly the byproducts was that they had implemented and created a strong apparel base. They created the base to pay off their debts by manufacturing. They couldn't, they didn't have the finances to, to pay off the debt. So all what they promised was to use their labor, their people to produce, right? They used their labor to produce military uniforms to pay off their debts. And when that, when that was over, guess what? They had the machines. They had the equipment and even more so, they had the knowledge and the skills. They had developed the knowledge and the skills to manufacture. And she shared with me that she was one of those leaders back then that started traveling the world, right? Making private meetings with big time retailers all over the world to close deals to say, you know what? Come to Vietnam. We can produce apparel for you. We will work with the government, all of those things. Just take a risk on us. Because after they, they had embargo before, right? But when that went down, then they could trade with the rest of the world. Fast forward to today. Listen, check check the label of your shirt. I'm sure if most people in, the, in this in this world somehow somehow will have something that is from Vietnam, but you don't know the history of it. Chile is is another region, right? Their productivity. <laughs> Listen, Chile. Small, relatively small country, but their productivity per population is, if, if it's not the top in the world, Chile, at least if it's in banana from <laughs> productivity producers will produce, okay, and will distribute and will sell. And in exchange for their creation, they will get money into their economy, into their country, into the families that invested time, energy, and resources into that. So are you a consumer or a producer, right? Is that, yes, consumption is ever, you're going to consume anyway, your cell phone, your TV, everything. That's the principle of consumption. Acquiring the things you need to use to live your life, the lifestyle you want to live, whatever that is, you're going to need to go out there and buy your food, buy your clothing, buy your shelter, invest in houses. That's consumption. It's the end in of itself. But when producers consume, they consume, consume to produce. It's a means to an end. And the end, the final end is to create, it's to innovate, it's to produce. And when they do that, they will distribute it. We will sell our goods. We will, we will tell you, buy my stuff. We will invite you to participate, right? For me, while I play in, um, you know, lotions and potions and all those things, the one that really, you know, moves my heart the most is my work when it comes to training, wealth education training. I, I lead with that. I'm, more, I'm so passionate about that. Yes, while I have, you know, buy my lipstick, <laughs> buy my this, but the one that really gets me going is just this message of guys produce and production is not easy that's why most people will not do it that's the other thing this is easier to be entertained it's easier to just throw your hands sit down chill and let everybody be feeding you what you want and so you will spend all your money on consumption but don't complain no. <laughs> because your children will come do repeat the same thing repeat the same thing it's a culture it's a culture it's a culture you realize that those who produce, they will also produce children. They are likely to produce and pass on that mindset to their children. It's, it's a culture. Productivity is a culture. That's what I have seen. I've seen this. Productivity can be a family business in a way because it's a way of thinking. When one generation invests time, energy, and resources to build a company, you think they want that company to disappear. No, they will tie up assets and assets class and all of those things. The inheritance of the kids, they put it into that business and they tell the kids, listen, watch over the asset. This is your inheritance. <laughs> 
if you don't want it mm, if you want it mm, we are going right so you see that's when they now start talking about generational wealth is that when one generation builds on the other and they are, they have an asset that they've created that has value in the marketplace is able to generate value is able to create things people will keep consuming think about those companies right 80 year old company 100 year old companies creating chocolates creating dishwashers refrigerators they are not going anywhere you know why we continue to consume all these things eh valentine day we will all say buy me chocolate <laughs> so cadbury will be here ashes will be here because there's always demand for them and let's say 80 years later they are still buying cocoa producing it putting sugar packaging it labeling it you think about diamond they will tell us it is a lady's best friend so some people will still keep drilling it polishing it at the end of the day it's still carbon but because we've tied value to it anything that human beings have tied value to is commercially commercially viable <laughs> anything that humans want listen here you want sand you can go to walmart and buy a bag of sand when you talk about sand sand that if you're not near a beach if you're near a beach you can peep, you can get your own but dirt or sand that you need to plant your flowers you will invest and buy it because where you are if it doesn't have the type of sand naturally or dirt that will help you plant then you'll find your way to home depot or any of these stores and you'll give them if it's 4.99 5.99 they've done the work for you right so anything that we want anything that we value anything that we need for sustenance for the life we want is commercially viable meaning you can transact you can transact you can exchange it for money when somebody wants something you have you they want it bad enough you can put price on it now you can give it up you can give it all away for charity but commercial viability is tied to value perceived value value perception value management value money so when i teach in my school i cover these things you want to build a business listen value people must value what you're building right because if they don't value it that means they're not going to invest money in it right because we use money to buy the things that we want money is a tool that we use to buy to acquire value right we exchange money for value so the only way people are going to buy what you want or what you have is that the value is there it's the perceived, perceived value exists in the minds and the imagination of whoever you're talking to and how you influence imagination this is when i start teaching on branding okay branding <laughs> i'm not going to teach too much but those who don't invest in the brand you will struggle to sell you struggle to sell because branding allows you to tell the story of who you are what you do what you can do for people and not just that's the foundation not just that what's the value particularly you know i've taught this before if you're if you are trying to sell physical products it's easier than selling concepts services intangible because the five senses touch smell sight hearing taste the five human senses is able to assess physical products and for the buyers to determine if they want it or not you smell a perfume Im immediately you can say i like this i don't like this you taste food quickly you can say i like it i don't like it right you hear music quickly you can say i like it i don't like it right so when the five human senses can lay hold of value can touch it feel it experience it we can quickly fast track that process to concluding do i want it or not activating desire want need but when you are selling intangible okay you have to activate imagination right you still have to people cannot touch it they cannot see it, they cannot smell it right this is when i teach in my school there are you know workbooks around storytelling different types of storytelling to support right value delivery right you have to use stories to help people understand 
what it is you can do for them. So for example, at the end of the day, what I help people do, okay, is to achieve business success faster. Faster is the key. You can go five years, 10 years trying to do it by yourself. Good luck with that. But if you want to achieve that success faster, then my classes, my courses, my workbooks, my services, right? I provide those services to teach you what I know, what I do, how I support the biggest brands in the world. I bring those big business services to support you. And guess what? You will unlock business success faster than if you were doing this by yourself or if you were working with somebody else that do not have my experience. That's it. Faster, speed. So you hear me say use keywords, learn fast, accelerate, quantum leap like my show is because I'm a, I serve as a catalyst. Let's speed these things up. Hurry up. <laughs> Let's. Do you have five years to waste or do you want to learn in weeks? That's it. That speed is what my message is tied to. Hurry up. I can teach you faster, quicker. You get results, right? Faster than if you were attempting it by yourself or working with somebody else. So get clear in terms of who you are, what you're about, intentionality. And if you're a producer, reach out. When it comes to entrepreneurship, we have to adopt a new mindset, right? My book, Mindset of an Entrepreneur, covers that. If you are going from employee mindset, you're considering being an entrepreneur, or you just became an entrepreneur, you're going to struggle. Listen, I say it's a lion in the zoo be going into the wild. You need to go and sit with Papa Lion, Mama Lion that have scars, that can tell you stories of how you survive, how they survive the jungle. If you are going from your comfort, the comfort zone of your, you know, nice, comfortable, corporate, you know, looking good, smelling good. Listen, I love that. Listen, I played, I was there. <laughs> I am there. <laughs> I still serve on the board, right? So I get it. Listen, corporate is the easiest money you will make. Sit down, make that money. Use that money to educate yourself. Use that money to invest in your future. You won't hear me tell anybody to leave. Don't leave, oh. Collect that money. Collect the change. <laughs> because I know what it means to leave that good chiching, right? And invest in building legacy. I know what it is and I know the value. I won't trade it, but I try to encourage and inspire and tell people, Enroll in my school, learn, 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 and then you can use the knowledge and the skills to build. Then you will build and you will build and you will build. But people are attempting to build without knowledge, without skill, without capacity. And that is why they are struggling. You keep struggling until you learn this thing. So either you learn it by yourself or you invest, <laughs> you know, and come and learn from me, right? So that's what my school is about. My programs, my classes, listen, world class. You will learn and then you build. You will learn and you will build. You build assets that have equity that you own that you can pass on to the next generation. And I see many people struggling right now. It's lack of knowledge, lack of skill, lack of understanding. So let me wrap it up for today. Any other thoughts? Um, who else wanted to? Okay, yeah, we got everything. I'm going to wrap up. That's it. Head over to towingumessiri.com. To learn more about the different ways I support, whether it's international trade development or business entrepreneurship development, if you want to join my academy, then you um, go to www.towingumessery.com slash academy. If you want to download workbooks right now, then slash workbooks, towingumessery.com slash workbooks. There's one workbook in particular that I recommend, like if you are starting, if you're a starter, the Entrepreneur's Market Research Workbook and the Accelerator Course. Listen, there are over 30 strategic questions that that workbook will help you do your market research. Because when it comes to market, you're not just selling a product or service in isolation. Okay? Think about a market as, as where people are trading. People are exchanging. They're spending money. They're buying and selling things that look like your products and services. You need to study what that looks like. You need to understand consumer behavior, on and on and on. So head over to towingumessery.com right now slash workbooks to access and download workbooks that will help you unlock, listen, insights in your business that will help you take your business to the next dimension. So thank you, everyone. I'll see you around. Reach out if you have questions. Don't be shy. <laughs> Ask questions. Listen, on this journey of productivity, of creativity, of business growth and success, business development, 
selling, marketing, branding, one thing you must learn how to do is to ask great questions of the right people. You have to learn that. There's no way around it. You have to learn how to ask the perfect question. Google will ask you to ask a question. ChatGPT will ask you to ask a question. Is that even for us, the best experts in the world, we have the knowledge, we embody the knowledge, we embody the skills that can help you accelerate your journey. But if you don't show up, if you don't check in with yourself and say, what questions do I have within me? Do I need help? If you don't acknowledge that you need help, listen, you can go to G chat GPT. You can be able to log into it on your phone. But if you don't type and tell chat GPT what you want, what you are trying to achieve in your life, if you don't engage, those things are not useful. That's what's happening in the world. You have tools, capacities, information, experts like myself. But if you don't come to us, if you don't engage, if you don't go to the stream, listen, the river is flowing. The river of knowledge is flowing. The river of money is flowing. All this, if you don't go to it, you are the one to go to it and challenge the world and fetch what you want out of the world. I've just moved into a little bit of spirituality there. Is that many times, if you don't ask, not even many times, this is a biblical principle. Ask, seek, you'll find, right? Ask, you'll be given, seek, you'll find, knock, and the door will be opened. It's back to that spiritual principle. You ask the world, intentionality, what do you want? What do you desire? Right? What vision do you have for yourself? Where are you going? That you have to start. It's within you. I cannot help you answer that. But the moment you have intentionality, you know what you want. What are you building? One story building, 10 story building, 100 story building. That will then guide you to know what you need to build that. That will then guide you to know the type of support you need. That will then guide you to my academy. If you want to build a world-class business, a globally relevant brand, right? Then you don't, don't be settling with, you know, basic amateur stuff. Click here, click there, oh, a little bit here. That stuff will not take you far. If you are going on a journey, listen, you also have to understand what transportation, how soon do you want to arrive? It ought to influence right how we are showing up every day where we are putting our time energy and resources and when people are not intentional right they waste time they waste energy they waste resources because they are just showing up without direction right when you wake up in the morning this is another week here monday if you wake up and you come into this week without intention without clarity listen the week will come and go Another weekend will come, and the question is, what did you get out of the week? Another year will come, another year will go. The question is, what did you use the year for? People without intention will not be able to answer this question in a way that they are proud of. When a year runs by, what did you build? What did you create? Who did you become? How did you use the opportunity that that year held for you? Did you tap into it or did you give it away? Did you waste it? This life, eh, it will always show you. When the year goes by, whatever you can carry into a new year, okay, that's what you walked away with, right? If you create a company, you have an LLC and you've done this brand, brand. When you move into the new year, that becomes the foundation you build on the next dimension. So intentionality is very important. Intentionality is very important. It's, it's a fierce pursuit. If you're not fiercely pursuing anything, if you're not fiercely pursuing your dreams, if you're not fiercely pursuing, okay, your hopes, aspirations, then it means you are surviving today, right? If you're not fiercely going after something, if you're not fiercely intentional, the energy of intentionality is different from complacency. Complacent people so-so. Do you want this? Mm. What do you want? Anything goes. Then you keep engaging. Listen, life will give you what you want. You want so-so, you get so-so. You want big stuff, then your energy, you must bring your energy, your seriousness, your focus, your fierceness to it. Listen, when you see a lion, nobody dare mess with the lion. You know why? <clears throat> it, nothing will stand between the lion and what it wants. Let that be you. 
But guess what? Most of the time, people's mindset in themselves, they've used it to limit their own pursuits. Energy will be released the more knowledge you have. Knowledge is power, right? Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. It will help you power and pursue. Little knowledge, little power. More knowledge, more power. The power you embody will allow you to be effective in your pursuit. So any person that does not value knowledge, any person, any people, any group, any community that keeps this discounting this thing I'm saying, I don't have to say anything. <laughs> Let me just keep quiet. <laughs> people perish for lack of knowledge. And people who love knowledge, buy wisdom, sell it. This thing, you keep seeing them up, achieving. Nobody carries you up. You carry yourself. You, 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 cut, you, you, you send yourself to space. You load up energy and you propel yourself to wherever you want to get to. Nobody takes you there. You take yourself. So if you see anybody now doing what you want to achieve, let me tell you, they propel themselves by investing time energy into unlocking wisdom, wealth creation, knowledge, on and on and on. You don't, it's not magical, guys. It's practical. <laughs> Success is practical. Tweet that. Success is very practical. It's not theory. <laughs> you don't read a book and then become successful. Mm -mm. Success is highly practical. It's tied to what you do, what you're able to do, what you do. Listen, what you roll up your sleeves and do and create, the energy you assert, right? The energy you bring to your work, that's what leads to success. You cannot sit down, roll, you know, fold your legs, read 10 books, and then not apply it, not take it, not do action. You can read a thousand books on losing weight. Listen, the only way you achieve it is to get on a treadmill, unless you cheat the system and do other things. But the natural, traditional way, it has nothing to do with how many books you read. It has 100% it has to do with the, the effort, the action you take in pursuit of that result. Business is the same. Consume all the content you want and do nothing. Nothing will change. Nothing will change if you consume content from January to December and you don't change the action. You don't take any action. You don't do anything without knowledge. You don't discipline yourself to show up. This is something we need to be telling our kids now. By now, we need to be calling our teenagers and be educating them. Guy, hard work <laughs> is the secret to success. That's what we ought to be telling the next, 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 next generation. But we, but they are watching us. You know? This mindset, this question I'm asking today. Your children are watching you, your behavior. If you buy, if all you are doing, they are seeing you buy this, buy that, buy this, and you're not telling them assets, build a business, they will repeat everything you did. You repeated what you saw. They will repeat everything you did as well. So if at all, don't even do this for you alone. Do it for the next generation. Change their own mindset. Take them to class. The other day, listen, I was, I was doing, I, there was one of my kids, I saw their teacher reached out and said, oh, we're doing Shark Tank. I was like, sign me up. We went to go and do Shark Tank in the middle school. Yes, we're doing fake money. Let us start that conversation here. I will Shark Tank you. <laughs> Yes. Tell me your innovation. What did you create? And the, the kids did fantastic. I was so impressed. I was like, why didn't they start doing this long time ago with us? Yes. Business presentation. They asked them to innovate, to, right? Let me wrap up. Guys, thank you so much. Let me just wrap up here. <laughs> we'll see you around. God bless you.